The United Nations Climate Change Panel has released its latest report on global warming. The panel says it's 96% sure the warming of the climate is mostly due to our industrialized civilization. But it has drastically toned down its predicted rate of warming to two and a half to four degrees per century, while still predicting the polar ice will melt, flooding coastlines, more powerful storms, heat waves and droughts, all as a result of man-made warming. Well, John Coleman continues to be highly skeptical of those predictions and is here now tonight with a rebuttal. John? Well, the United Nations has definitely softened its claims and its predictions in this latest report. So how many scientists are saying it has lost its credibility? Well, a lot. And that's no surprise, since the predicted climate crisis shows no signs of actually happening. There has been no catastrophic warming of the temperatures, no melting of the polar ice or flooding of the coastlines, no mammoth heat waves, droughts, or an epidemic of superstorms. And here is the most basic fact. The average temperature of the atmosphere of planet Earth has remained essentially constant for more than 15 consecutive years. The moderate warm-up of the previous 20 years ended in 1998, and the UN climate models had all predicted that temperatures would be skyrocketing during the first decades of the 21st century. Well, those models were wrong, dead wrong, and that cast a heavy shadow of doubt on the entire global warming scenario. Meanwhile, the polar ice is not all melting away as predicted either. The amount of ice at the South Pole is at an all-time high, and melting at the North Pole, which had been increasing somewhat during the last decade, reversed this year, and the summer melt was considerably less than last year, with the ice cover several hundred thousand square miles more extensive at this time than it was a year ago. And as for the ocean rise, well, it's very difficult to measure it with all the tidal influences, the sinking and rising of land masses through constant plate tectonics. But the bottom line is this, any rise in ocean levels is too minor to measure with certainty, and certainly not alarming or a reason to predict coastal flooding in the foreseeable future. Now, as for severe storms, the tornado season this year was benign, with far fewer and less powerful tornadoes than usual. And now we're halfway through the hurricane season, with even fewer storms than usual, no hurricanes making U.S. landfall. Well, that could change at any time, but it really doesn't matter, because Nature, the prestigious science journal, said last year that better models are needed before exceptional weather events can be reliably linked to global warming. And also, the big drought that gripped Texas a year ago, well, it's largely disappeared. And all of this underlines the basic flaw in the UN panel's global warming scenario. They have a theory that carbon dioxide released into the air by the burning of fossil fuels interacts with the primary greenhouse gas water vapor to produce dramatic atmospheric warming. This new report has no new research to prove that theory, and the models that supposedly proved it have totally failed to verify so many scientists are challenging the panel to explain their failings. Carbon dioxide, which continues to be a minor trace gas in our atmosphere, less than one half of one percent, is essential to life on Earth. And based on the UN research, it has been branded as a pollutant. The tax-funded scientists have long held the theory of so-called radiative forcing, and they say this power hugely magnifies the warming impact of CO2 on the atmosphere. In this new report, this carbon dioxide warming continues to be the foundation of the UN's global warming scenario. Dr. Judith Curry, a climatologist and head of the Georgia Tech Meteorology Department, put it this way, global warming advocates are facing an existential threat to their theories. Let's face it, this is now a totally failed theory. It is a great puzzlement to me why this bad science is allowed to continue to lead government policies that are costing us U.S. citizens, us taxpayers, huge inflated prices for food and gasoline. The weaknesses of science behind the U.N. report are being widely noted now in some of the media. Well, perhaps, perhaps this is the beginning of the end of the global warming scare campaign.